Previously on Search and Restore, parts flew in after the phone calls were made, as the 67 Chevy 2 began its transformation from a tired old rust bucket to a shiny new street machine. Today, the family gets a sneak peek at the new power plant, followed by assembly, then paint. Right, Tim? Yes! It's been a busy two weeks on the Search and Restore set, where a lot of progress has been made on our first project. We sent the call out to viewers, and you responded big time. Yeah, I think we got over 50,000 applicants so far in these books right here. It's amazing. Our team is looking for worthy candidates with compelling stories, vehicles, and their owners who could use a hand. Now, most of the submissions, or a lot of the submissions, aren't from the candidates themselves. It's from friends or neighbors or other community members that just want to recognize their contributions to the community. There are definitely a lot of deserving candidates here. What were your plans to do with this? Nova? Like Andy Wilson and his classic muscle car, he lost his wife Jessica to cancer a few years back and never got to restore the Chevy they call Casper. He's too busy raising his children, Gavin, Emmett, and Hunter and grinding out a living as a mechanic with an earshot of his home outside Cookville, Tennessee. He's the nicest, most patient man that I've ever met. And between him and Jesse, the two of them are like a perfect couple. And when she was going to leave, she was worried about how it was going to work out with him being the, the sole caregiver. With the help of both sets of grandparents, the family has persevered, and their family heirloom is in good hands too. Hot Rod Builder Tim Strange is steering this ship. Does anybody feel like we're just going in circles? He and his cast of characters know the pressure's on to build a reliable and safe muscle car for the Wilsons, but not without having a good time doing it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Tim's a nice guy. He's a good dude. <laughs> He's a nut. He's definitely a cut up and he keeps us laughing, which is good because we're under a lot of pressure here, but that's all right. There's some Southern t acting guy. Oh, I got some flowers. I think you call him Tommy. Flowers. In the right order. Kevin from Trucks is sweating. I've never seen him sweat. What? <laughs> Look at this. Perspiration. Rick is like just a stand in. Hey, Tim, did you order an assembly manual for this thing? I don't think he's ever had a screwdriver in his hand. <laughs> you know, you got guys running around with hair spiked up to here. And you got other guys that are just, you know, talking about moonshine. Don't use that. Please do not use that. It's just it's a whole different world some days. <laughs> Even though we joke around a lot, all these guys are really hard workers, know what they're doing. We've had a blast, we've pitched in, and we're really building a cool project. Our Loctite build team have brought their own special set of skills, including marketing manager Karen Verosky. Yeah, try to stay on that line. Karen, by trade, is a fine arts specialist. I wanted to sculpt uh, big sculptures out of metal and uh, went to art school. One little thing unique about her is that when she was a senior in high school, she won the Connecticut Regional Welding Championship. It's going to be an angled weld. I haven't welded uh, a lot over the last uh, couple of years here in, in my marketing role, but it's coming back to me. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> Her enthusiasm, as you see here at the build. Right on. Yes. How's no. that? Yeah. <laughs> Translates back to the office as well. She's very enthusiastic about engaging with our customers and helping them uh, with the Loctite products. She's doing really awesome. It's like a stack of dimes through there. Um, this is a really great experience. Glad to be here. I think it's going well. <laughs> I did do a lot of MIG welding on my dad's Model A, and if there's one thing I can tell all the dads out there, and, and Andy as a, as a single dad, don't be afraid to involve your daughters in your projects because uh, it's, it's time spent with your kids that, you know, is valuable, and I, I really appreciate all that time that I had with my dad doing that. Coming up, trouble on the engine run stand, and later on, strange is no stranger to a paint booth. Stay tuned. Day nine on the Nova build and the floor pans the guys ordered a week ago still aren't here. Par for the course when attempting to restore a muscle car on an incredible four week deadline. Tommy's cutting some more cross braces, getting ready to weld them in the car. Once those are in there, we're gonna start plasma cutting the floor out so we can drill some spot welds. In the normal build order, you would put the floors in first. But since we had to wait, we couldn't stand around and do nothing. So we had to do stuff out of an extreme order what we would normally do. So we kind of rolled the dice, did some stuff before the floors, and 
it looks like it's gonna work out okay for us. The floor here. Woohoo! Who wants a hug? What are you waiting on this? Full <laughs> floor panel with automatic cutoff, 62 to 67 Nova. I guess so. Uh, hey guys, floor pan. Okay, in by lunch. I brought down my buddies Brad Starks and Tom Opoff, high-end hot rod builders, buddies for a long time, build some really cool cars. They come down to help volunteer, to help Andy, to give back. Enjoy doing it because it's for a reason. It's for you're giving back to someone, so it's a really neat idea. And to put the floors in, they're both metal wizards, and they went through that floor in like a day and a half like nothing. The car's gonna be great. It's built good, it's got good parts under it. It ought to last a long time. There's still a lot to go, a lot of work, but You've got a good team, a lot of good people helping, so I think it'll move on pretty smoothly, probably as smoothly as it can for the time period. Not only volunteers, but companies have really stepped it up, donating their products and services to Andy's Nova. Lindsay and Kevin from Nitroplate dropped by with our headers and exhaust system, now sporting their highly polished aluminum ceramic coating. Oh, yeah. We just come out of the oven, they're still warm. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff can be used on everything from intakes to wheelie bars, but the main goal for these two hot rodders was to simply lend a helping hand. When we heard what you guys were doing for Andy and his family, we just wanted to come out and help out with the ceramic coating here at Natural Plate, and anything you guys need, we're here. Just give us a call and we'll take care of you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. On the other side of the shop, the team is connecting the 383 to an engine run stand in hopes of firing it up by the end of the day. Too many chiefs, not enough engines. We got one engine. You can tell that these are trained professionals. They're speaking that code. Yep, up, oh, no, yep, uh, right there, oh, yep. No, no, to the left, come up a little bit. Oh, 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 right there. See, you thought I was kidding. Try it again, yeah. As professionals, our guys know that things don't always go right the first time, or the second time, or the third time. But for Andy's sake, we're going to keep on trying. Damn, I was awful hopeful. Bad starter. Problem solved. When we come back, more goodies arrive as the volunteer spirit spreads throughout the aftermarket community. Plus, the Wilsons drop in for an update on Casper when Search and Restore continues. Back at the shop, some final masking is done before the car rolls into the prep booth for sound deadening and undercoating. This is the stage of the build where the mechanics say the hard work is done, and the paint guys say it's only the beginning. And here comes more sand. Just mixed up some lizard skin, pour it in the cup, put a couple heavy coats on there for sound deadening and heat insulation. Earlier, Wayne and Pam McGriff stopped by. They own M&M Hot Rod Interiors out of Holly Pond, Alabama. Theirs is a full-service custom upholstery shop. Not only have they earned quite a reputation nationwide, they also created this awesome black leather interior for PowerBlock's very own Red Sled. But today, they find the interior for Andy's Nova to be a lot less of a challenge. This is just basic trim work. It's not like custom making seat covers or anything like that. That takes days where this takes just a few hours. Though this may be easy, the M&M team still has a trick or two up their sleeves to improve on the seat's original design and construction. I had him put an extra layer of padding on the back seat because these kids will jump all over it and that's what kids need to do. You know, they need to, they need to play and, and uh, enjoy it. One delivery we couldn't wait to get our hands on was all the chrome work from Steve Tracy and his artisans at Advanced Plating. Bumpers coming out. They produce some of the finest chrome work in the nation. And what's nice is his shop is just around the corner. Now, plating on this level is far more than just dipping a part in the chrome tank. Steve's team does complete restoration work on all kinds of metal. So what the customer gets back is not just a shinier version of their original part, it's a completely restored and freshly chromed piece. Wow. Yeah. That is beautiful stuff, Steve. 
You can tell the sign of a good chrome shop when you run your fingers along the edge of a bumper. They not, fin not only finish the front, they finish the edges too. Look at that, how nice that is. Now it's not just the big parts. Even the smallest details all get the advanced plating treatment. And Steve realizes his contribution is not just about building a very nice street machine. There's a lot more to this than just chroming parts. The plating business has been very good to me and this uh, allows me to actually give back to somebody well deserved you know, this guy's gonna be able to hop in this car, load up his three kids, drive down the road, and the world's gonna look very promising. Hey, Andy, Hi, are you there? Hi, Tim. Yeah, I'm here, Tim. I see you got all the kids today. <laughs> I do. I got a circus. <laughs> it looks like you fed them sugar for breakfast. Not much, just like <laughs> half a bag. <laughs> are you guys ready to see the car? We can give you a sneak peek. Can you see that? Nice. Look, it's our car. What'd they do to it? We've been working really hard on it, and we've had to use the bake system in the paint booth, and I think we might have had the heat turned up just a little too high. I don't know. Is there any way to make it bigger? We can maybe put it in a stretcher and pull it back open. Okay, Andy, we know you were wanting to put a V8 in that car, but we did a little research on the VIN when we were tearing it apart that we know that it had a, an inline six in it originally. So. Right. We thought maybe we'd put that back in there, and we didn't care what you thought. We got it on the run stand. It should be a nice, quiet, go to church, go to the grocery store type of car. See, I think you'll be really, really happy with it. But we do are going to let you hear it run. Hey, do you guys want a six cylinder in our car? Or an eight cylinder? V8. I'm on a six nine cylinder. <laughs> 69. What? Just tell them, the six cylinder, nah, it's not gonna work. It's really a uh, 383 small block stroker. Okay. Uh, Chevy engine with all Edelbrock top end. And we got it running last night and we're gonna let it hear it. Okay, sounds good. Go, Daddy. Look at that. Yes. You might wanna watch your ears. <laughs> so I think you're going to be really happy with the performance of this motor once you get it in the car. How do you think it sounded? <laughs> so you want any mufflers on it? You just want to run straight pipes like that? Just for going to get groceries, maybe some mufflers. You know. Okay, we'll take care of that for you. You want to hear it run again? Hey, Ryan, can we start that thing up again? I believe so. That's just awesome, isn't what do you it? Think about that. Uh, that is awesome. I did it too. That is awesome. We're we're glad you like the way the motor sounds. We're gonna go get back to work, and we'll see you when you come pick it up. Okay, that sounds great, man. Thanks, guys. See you, Andy. Later, man. See you guys. Just got done putting the white sealer. It was an epoxy bare metal edge primer. Now I'm getting ready to put the white color on the first time around all the jams, a little bit around the trunk, firewall and everything. I got some DuPont Chromer Premier I'm getting ready to spray down. Day 13, and with all the jams painted and cleared, the Nova can start hanging all the body panels on. Can finally go together for good. Put all the gaps back right. Okay, this is kind of a pivotal right, moment. See the new subframe going the firewall looking like a brand new car. Since this is the last time these parts will go on, we've really got to pay attention to the details. Man, that looks good. Earlier, Eric Saliba donated his fab skills with a unique piece. We're looking to make an air cleaner for this car. Just kind of thinking something, you know, old school, dragster looking, but not too out of control for what the rest of the car is. <laughs> Toilet seat. <laughs> first things first, they gotta make a wood buck in order to make the top and bottom panel and get a radius around the edge. We need about three and a half inches tall, so I use two three quarter pieces and a quarter piece. Stack all that junk up into a big sandwich and we'll have us a buck.
Back on the floor, this is the first time the real engine in trans gets dropped in, so we knew it would take some finesse. So that is I'm not watching the cross member by you, Kevin. I'm watching uh, where the frame is. All right, I'm watching the cross member. Here we go. Okay, easy. Yeah, it's a cool wheel. Yeah. What's going yeah. on, guys? Uh oh, uh oh. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Everyone said that you won. And it even plays with this ticket? That is awesome. Ta da. There's more than one way to get to the end result. It's just lots of hours, lots of sanding and blocking and sanding and blocking and priming and fitting and gapping. To you guys, it looks mind numbing, but we know we got to do it for the end result. Put one coat of sealer on it, and then we put four coats of the white, and then we masked off the blue, and then cover the whole car. Then we sprayed two or three little light coats of that, let that dry, then go back in and we masked and we did the charcoal color. I think I put four coats of the charcoal on, let that sit for about an hour and a half. And I actually put a little bit more clear on than a lot of people do because with all the sand and the polishing you're gonna do, you actually remove about three coats of clear. So there's <coughs> seven coats of clear on the thing. Perfect. When Andy and the kids come to pick up this car next week, they're gonna be really excited once they see it, hear it run, and see it move finally. Next time on Search and Restore, it's a mad dash to the finish line. With installation of a complete interior, wiring, gauges, plus a test drive that doesn't go so well. And we lost everything. And the Wilsons arrive at the shop to take delivery of a family treasure. I think the car's looking really good, and I think Andy's gonna be happy. I think it looks really good. Except for Kevin's <laughs> wiggling behind me. <laughs> What? I can honestly say I think Andy's going to flip when he sees this thing. I think it looks really awesome. I think Andy's going to be really happy with it.